In today's lab session, we'll be looking at a study of the effect of varying gas concentrations on guppy ventilation rates. So you all would see we have a guppy in the aquarium right now. It's in a normal environment. Um, what we're going to be doing in this lab session is varying the oxygen concentrations by altering the different beakers the guppy will be in and adding dissolved oxygen to different mediums to look at how the ventilation rate would change with concentration of oxygen being changed in its external environment. So ventilation, as you all would remember, is the movement of a respiratory medium over a respiratory surface. In this case, we're looking at a fish, so its respiratory surface would be its gills. Ventilation is under autonomic control in vertebrates and is controlled in the brainstem. The main purpose of ventilation would be to allow for respiratory surfaces to passively take up oxygen and give up carbon dioxide by diffusion. So it would be expected by altering the oxygen concentrations, it would have a direct effect on the rate of ventilation of the fish. Um, in terms of metabolic activity, oxygen will be used by mitochondria for the production of ATP, which is the form of energy that the organism would need to survive and carbon dioxide being produced as a waste product. Therefore, with a drop in oxygen or increase in carbon dioxide in the blood and tissues, it would expect be expected that there's an, it's indicative of a need for ventilation to take place. In this lab, there will be a survey of different environmental triggers affecting ventilatory movement. We will also try to determine by experiment if a fall in oxygen or a rise in carbon dioxide levels would be the trigger for ventilation by stimulating the environmental conditions of scarcity and surplus of the different gases. Um, we do not have material to alter the carbon dioxide concentration, so we will be focusing on alteration of the oxygen concentration in the medium. So for the first part of our experiment, we will be looking at the or counting the number of opercular beats per minute in the normal environment. If you all would remember from the previous lab, we are taking account of the number of beats for 15 seconds, and then you all will use that information to calculate the number of beats per minute. We want to work with three different values, so you all will be counting the number of beats at three 15 second intervals, so that at the end of each uh, concentration of oxygen or each environment that we place the organism in, you will have three reps or three values to work with. And then from that, we would calculate the mean or pericular beats per minute. If you look at the table in your lab handout, you would see where you can input your values according to which environment your fish is present in. We are using a YSI meter, right, uh, to get a reading of the dissolved oxygen that is present in the water. Currently, the fish is present under normal conditions in its normal environment, and the reading we have on our YSI meter is 4.8. So the concentration of dissolved oxygen is recorded as 4.8 milligrams per liter. So you all can record that value as your normal concentration. Okay, so here we have the YSI meter that we will be using for this lab. Uh, YSI meters can be used to measure a variety of things. You can have YSI meters that measure salinity, dissolved oxygen, dissolved carbon dioxide, turbidity, temperature, pH. In the case of this lab, for the purposes of this lab, we have a YSI meter that measures dissolved oxygen. So this is specifically a dissolved oxygen meter. It also records temperature. The temperature of all the environments that the guppy is being placed in is the same and the only variable will be the amount of dissolved oxygen present. So to measure your dissolved oxygen, you simply switch on your YSI meter by pressing the on-off knob. You place your probe, and you just zero, and you will see the values on the YSI meter fluctuating. You keep your probe in your water environment until you get a stable reading. It also records for you your temperature, so you can also have an idea or see that your temperature in all of the different environments that your guppy is being placed in are the same. So you can keep record of that as well using your YSI meter. So this would have been the normal environment or the normal um, 
cantina where the fish was kept on the YSI reading was 4.8 for this environment. We will now allow you to count the number of apericular beats of the fish by recording for one minute. As I said, you will be doing three counts, three 15 second counts in order to get three values for this medium. The organism has now been placed into another environment. In this water sample, the water has been boiled and left to stand overnight for a period of 24 hours. So the oxygen concentration in this environment will be lower than in the normal environment the guppy would have been in previously. So again, we are observing the ventilatory movements of the opercula by counting the number of beats in 15 second periods, repeating to produce a triplicate of readings. So our YSI meter has given us a reading here of 5.2 dissolved gas, dissolved oxygen milligrams per liter. 5.2 is the reading for this first beaker. For this sample, we are aerating the environment using an air pump. So the YSI meter is present and aeration has been going on for about two or three minutes now. The reading for concentration of dissolved gases is at 7.4 milligrams per liter of oxygen. So we will now be taking recordings of opercular beats in this oxygen concentration. In this last sample, we'll be looking at a concentration of 7.9 milligrams per liter of oxygen, according to the YSI meter. 
and we'll be taking the opercular beads for three 15 second intervals. So we'll be using the table provided on your lab handout to put in your data with regards to the repetitions, the opercular beats for your three readings at four diff in four different oxygen concentrations. You'll be calculating the mean opercular beats per minute. So make sure you convert it first per minute. After calculating mean, you're going to calculate the standard deviation as well. Results for carbon dioxide concentration will be provided to you and using these two sets of data you are to graph your results on the same pair of axes. We are graphing the mean opercular beats per minute against concentration of dissolved gases for both carbon dioxide and oxygen so you should obtain two curves. And from this data you are to answer your post lab questions that are provided to you on your lab handout.